Hi everyone, today we are going to go through how we can create a lightning component against a regular developer edition sandbox without using scratch works basically. So I, I already have signed up for a personal developer edition. In this example, I will be using that. So the first step is to create a DX project. So if you have Visual Studio code and the necessary extensions, the Salesforce extension pack, Uh, if you don't have, please go to VS Code and uh, install this Salesforce extension pack. It's uh, actually a group of extensions. You need to have this for the full DX development experience. So first step is to create a Salesforce DX project. You can do Control Shift to P or Command Shift to P and then select SFDS create project. Then create a project name. Select a location. It will create a scaffold, it will scaffold a sample project for you. So the next step is to authenticate this against uh, your personal dev org. So in my case, uh, I'm going to authenticate it using authorize an org. So if you type SSFD, it's authorize an org. So it will be a, a devel personal developer org. So it will be login.salefish.com. It will need an alias. So just type uh, once you're authenticated. You can you can leave the, leave the window open or closed, but uh, here you can see that the authentication was success, and you'll get a message. You may close the browser now. So the next step is to create a Lightning Web Component. So this is a Lightning Web Component. I'm just uh, going to call it my first uh, WC. So by default, it will select the LWS. It will suggest the LWC directory. If you want, you can put it somewhere else. So I'm selecting the same folder. And you can see that uh, it has created a folder here with a HTML template, a JavaScript, and a metadata file. So just to make sure that it is working, uh, we'll do some basic component here so just to show dynamic behavior I will declare a variable in JavaScript so there are no uh, attributes like aura in lightning web components instead this will be plain JavaScript variables annotated with at track variable We need to import the track variable also. You can see that it is giving highlighting a warning here. So it's saying it needs to be imported. Ideally, you can just click a quick fix. Yeah, it doesn't work here. So you can just import it from LWC using syntax like this. Once it is created like this, you can use this title variable in the page. So there are no V syntax anymore. Earlier we need to use exclamatory V dot the attribute name, right? For Aura. Now you can just do uh, curly braces and uh, title. So another one difference with the uh, uh, lightning web component, sorry, 
Visual Studio extension, Salesforce extension development is that you have to push the code explicitly. So for that, you need to deploy this source to an org. You can see that this is deployed. Yeah, now there is one more step that you need to do. Uh, so now the component is deployed, but still there is no way to surface this component anywhere. For that, we'll just uh, create an Aura application. So I'll use create lightning app. So I will leave it in the Aura folder. So Aura components allow you to embed uh, lightning web components, but the reverse inverse is not true. Like you cannot embed a, an Aura component inside a lightning web component, but you can embed a lightning web component inside an Aura components. So in this case, my lightning web command name is So I have to deploy it once again. Yeah, there was a failure to run. Yeah, it's telling the component is not recognized. I doubt if it is case sensitive. Usually it gives IntelliSense, uh, basically code auto completion. Yeah, it has deployed the code. So now we can go to our org, developer console. So I can see the test tab that got created here. If I click preview, I can see that the title is coming dynamically from the JavaScript. And everything I have defined in HTML here, the test component title that is available here and the heading is also there. So if you need to add a SLDS style, you will usually add it in the application level. Using force SLDS index. It is still deploying that change to the sandbox. So here you can see that since the code is getting deployed to a regular sandbox, it is using metadata and it is doing the full deployment. Uh, that's why it is a little slow. Later we'll be able to see the performance difference when we do the same operation against a scratch org. So here you can see that uh, the font is different now. It's because uh, SLDS styles are getting applied. Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to show in this video watching keep watching for uh, more video lessons